I have my paper ready. I have my watercolors ready. I have my brushes ready. And I have my water ready. I prepare my colors that I want ahead of time so that they'll already be plenty um, wet and uh, ready to give up the color that I want to use. With watercolors, I like to use round brushes instead of the flat brushes. I have some of the brushes that I would use with the acrylic paints. They work well with watercolors as well, but I have some round ones here that are ready to go. And I'm going to start with the center. And Georgia O'Keeffe was one who did really big flowers and they, they came all the way off of the page. And that's kind of what ours are going to do. I'm going to wet my brush. And I think for the center of my poppy, I'm going to use some of this, this greenish brown. Kind of a grayish, greenish black. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking my brush. I'm just sort of dabbing it around. A little darker this time because I didn't get my brush wet before I did that. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and get a little bit more of that paint. Now you could use a more black color or you can use a more gray color. I'll pick up a little bit of black here. Put it along this side here. I'm just sort of dabbing it to make it blend in with the other. This is going to be kind of the shadowy area of my flower center. And having that variety of color on there really is extra depth added to it. So I've got a nice big center for my poppy. I think it might be a little, need to be a little bit bigger. And I'm not being too neat with the edges. I don't want a perfectly round center for my poppy. I want it to, to kind of feel like a a very natural center for my for my poppy. I'm going to switch to a little bit bigger of a brush. Use this one here. And I'm going to get some red. Now my red has started to dry out, so I'm going to make sure that I get a little bit more water onto it. And I'm going to think about the flower petals. Um, I'm going to think about the flower petals and I know that I'm going to probably want five. And I'm going to just sort of kind of outline a petal there. I mean, nice big, nice big petals for a poppy. If it paint, if my paint bleeds into my black, that's okay. I keep it nice and watery. I just picked some water up out of my out of my container. I'll drag that paint through there. Get my paper wet. Now I'm going to add some orangish red. I got this pretty orangish red here. A slightly different shade of of red going there. And I'm always pulling from the center of my flower outward. I'm gonna get a puddle, I'm gonna pull it pull it out so that it's not so that it's not staying in a puddle. I think I'll get some orange too. Oh that's pretty. Make sure that it goes all the way up to there. I think I might pick up a little bit more of that orange and put it over here as a highlight on this pet part of the petal. But I want to make sure that I keep my my edges nice and nice and sharp on that. So there's a petal. I use my dark red that I used to start with. And I'm just going to turn my whole board around. I'm going to start right here next to my center. I'm 
I'm going to use that nice dark red there. And then I'm going to continue to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to pull, pull my paint with some water. And when I need to get more, I'll just make sure that my brush has plenty of water on it. So that when I pull it, it'll pull that paint the way I want it to go. And I'm going to leave these ed this edge alone. You see how this one's starting to dry? We'll have that nice variation of color in there. I'm going to get this reddish orange that I used second. Just going to pull it right on up in, keeping my strokes with the direction of the contour of the petal. Now I'll start pulling some of that orange into it. Got this beautiful orange pulled into it. Using plenty of water and keeping with my contours. Putting that orange over on top of the red here. Get that variation of color. I have a light there, and I think that looks really good. I'm going to let this sit and dry for a little while before I continue, because if I continue before letting it dry, I might have this all blend together, and I really don't want that to happen. So I'm going to let this dry, and I will be back in a few minutes. Now I'm going to do the background petals, and I don't want to use the dark red that I used to start with for the first petals. I want to use the the more orangish red for that. I want to make sure that I get it plenty watery. I'm going to say, okay, well, this petal's going to go through here, and it's going to be the one that comes up over here. So I'm just going to put that little bit of edge for that one up there. I'm real careful to avoid the other one. Water it down a little bit. Pull right along there. Now I'm going to go into that more orangish color. To make sure that 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 one knows that it's a background petal. I'm just going to go carefully along the edge of my first petal. Use plenty of water to work my other paint out into this one. I can turn my, my paper around and I can come right back over here and darken that edge up just a little bit. Use the extra paint to kind of blend out that petal. Put that orange color over on this side as well. Some clean water to just help it move the way that I want it to go. With that petal. And now I'll work on the petal that's on this side and turn my board around. And I think this is all going to be one petal. So I'm going to start this one a little bit different. I'm going to put just the orange color in there. Paying attention to which one. My contour of that petal is probably going to be behind these others. And I want it to, to flow out from the center. I'm just going to wet right along this line here with some plain water. And that's going to actually help my paint to flow the way I want it to go. I'm 
some of that orangish color, the orangish red. I'm gonna be sure that when I'm working next to this one that I'm only using that orange color. So I want it to be very defined and known that it's a separate petal. But I can always come back in here and pull some of that red right on into the oranges. Right on up over my tape. hurts to get more water or more paint if you need it. Paying attention to the contour of that petal. And that one's starting to dry out enough to where I can work on this area. And this one's going to be the same as that one. I'm going to use a lot more of the orangish color. I'm going to make sure that I've got nice and damp right up along the edges of these so that my new paint will flow and not blend too much. I'm going to use that orange right on up in there. Carefully along the edge of the petal that's already there. This petal probably comes like this, so this is going to curve this way. Because that petal will be in behind there. I'm going to make sure that it's contours are the correct contours for it. I can, I can make it go that way, but when I go to pull the paint, I want to make sure that I'm pulling it the right direction for the contour. The contour is going to come this way over here. So I know that I want to pull that paint this way. I'll get some of that red in there. Just pull it right on through. Make it blend with that other paint. Nice and loose. Nice and loose. And I might come back in with some of that darker red just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a feel that it's part of the same flower. flower right on out. That petal will have come this way. So I want to make sure that I make my strokes look like they go that way. So that that flower knows that that petal goes the way it wants to go. The way it's supposed to go. That looks really nice. Looking for any of the little the little lines that feel like they're going the wrong direction. Around these edges I had a little bit of pooling that occurred with my with my my with my watercolor paint. And that's fine. If I need to come back in. And add a little bit more right over top of that. And give it a little bit more definition there. Always adding more water as I need it. Now I'm going to look at my center there and I see that I've had a little bit too much bleeding there. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my, my gray paint and come right up over that, cover up any little white spots that I've got that where I missed it and everything. Now I'm going to take my smallest brush 
my smallest round brush. I don't have a super tiny one, but that's okay. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to get a little bit of that paint. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to put, put a few little few little dots. Just very lightly touching. Barely the tip of the brush. Right onto the paper. Some of them will look a little bit darker than others. These are really light. If you have a tiny brush, you could use a tinier brush. Bring that out a little bit. That'll look a little more like a shadow there. And I think I'm happy with that.